Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 4, Work and Energy. The section is 4.D, Spring Potential Energy. Here's the scenario. The spring constants have already been found by an experiment that the students performed earlier. Now the students need to put together an experiment to demonstrate the conservation of mechanical energy. They need to show that when all the mechanical energy of a system is initially in the form of elastic potential, all the energy is transformed into another form of mechanical energy. You could read the rest if you would like, but this is the main part. You need an experiment to demonstrate the converse of the conservation normal of mechanical energy and you need to show that all the mechanical energy of the system is initially in the elastic potential and it's converted to another form of mechanical energy all right if you need some notes here you are this is the potential energy of an elastic spring it is one half kx squared x is the distance x is from its natural or its equilibrium so here x equals to zero you could stretch it and that becomes x or you could compress it and that distance still will be x. Once it lets go in this example, it's going to go to the other direction based on Hooke's law, the restorative force. Conservation of mechanical energy, it start, states that all the, put, all the kinetic and potential at the start, like in this case, it's all potential. Once it's all drop and the moment it hits the ground, it's all going to be all kinetic. The conservation of energy with the spring in it looks something like this, mgh, gravitational potential. You have your 1 h kx squared, that's all your spring potential, and you have your 1 half mv squared, which is your kinetic energy. This means that during an entire system, this needs to be conservative, ignoring external forces, so that you can compare the initial and the final based on the conservation law. All right? In theory, this is what the idea that we need to do this experiment. So before we even start an experimental design, you have to look at the theoretical setup of it, right? So what I have in red is actually the theory behind it. I want to get the initial, the final, the energy final has to be equal to the energy initial. Okay, we've seen this equation from the notes that I gave from. Right, what I what I'm thinking is that at the start it's going to be compressed, so it's all going to have spring potential. Then once it lets go, and if we shoot it up a ramp, it's going to go and it's going to gain potential energy. So I don't have to deal with velocity. At the end, it's all going to go. It's going to go up to a high a highest point, and that point is when it's all going to be gravitational potential. So I wrote, based on the conservation of energy, all the spring's potential energy will be converted to the gravitational potential energy once the spring is compressed, then let go up the ramp, right? So this is the theoretical setup, right? This might not be completely true. What makes better sense is it might look something like this. The reason why there might be an MGH at the start is because when you compress it, like this the the object still might be a little bit above the ramp so this would be a better measurement but i will also accept this okay all right so now once you have set up the theory and the theory makes sense you could see the letters right you need k you need you already have k if the student already determines that you need x which is the compression you have you need mass we know gravity is 9.8 and we need h which is height okay do you see how this equation will govern what you need to calculate mass of cart spring compression distance and the final height the object reaches hf i said that there was a possibility that if you introduce this down here that what you can do is you could also get the initial height the object was compressed because again of the height but also you can um, have in the middle, if you could figure out where the middle of the ramp is and you set up a motion gate here, you could, you could also get the velocity. That would be very good as well, okay? So you could show some steps. I didn't write the procedure, but I'm just going to walk you through it. First of all, you would have to get the mass, which you are just going to put on a scale. But here's the procedure once you have done it. It's in this color. First, you're going to put the object or the cart at the equilibrium. 
Um, you might have a ramp. You might set up bucks up here. This is at its equilibrium. This is when x equals to zero. So d mark it at as something. I mark it at red here. Then you're going to compress it. That distance, and I'm going to mark it blue. That distance that is between the equilibrium is going to be your x. Right here, like it says. The x is the distance away from its equilibrium. So that's the first measurement. Okay. Notice, do you see how it's above the, it's above, there's a height here. So there's still some gravitational potential. That's what I'm saying that this might be a better calculation. Okay. But that's up to you. Some students will ignore this and say, assume it's, it's close to zero. Then you're going to let go. Right there. This, this is an intermediate step. So this might occur first. So you're going to record if you have a motion gate at your school or a time gate or um, a something that measure. You could also use a stopwatch here, right? Uh, to find the time it takes the object to pass the middle point. But you will also need to use your kinematics to get to its velocity. Or if you have a motion gate, it just tells you its velocity at this point. Okay. Good. All right. Then the final step after it passes the middle, it's going to go up to the top. Okay. So it looks something like this. All right. So let the object, once the object passes through the middle, it's going to reach to the top. Once it reaches the top, you can use trig here to figure out the height because here this is the highest point. So here this is all this is represented by the all one half kx squared right then at the end it's all going to be mgh good that's one answer or you could say it's this if you would like All right okay there you go what you can now do so you're done that's the procedure okay that is the procedure right and this is and it says lab setup here you go now the the last part is include a method to reduce experimental error how you could reduce experimental error i can just write it here for you okay is that okay the cur the answer that they are looking for is to compress the same mass with different values of the spring displacement. So your X is going to be what is varying in this situation. Okay. A, um, a different answer that I suggest is to actually um, do the same spring displacement and do the same mass, but you're going to get a different height. You're like, wait, shouldn't the height be the same? Well, you're going to be marking it here. I said mark the highest point the object reaches and here is going to change because you actually have to physically eye like it's going to go up and you have to wonder where it stops before it comes down and you're going to mark it. There's going to be a lot of errors when you actually physically mark this if, unless you have a unless you mark unless you have a meter stick here and you have a camera and in slow motion that captures where this exactly is to stop it. Okay. So the error can become from where you're marking it. So that's why how you can reduce errors is doing different experiment, doing it 10 times and averaging out the height. So sometimes you might overshoot the height. Sometimes you might undershoot the height. Um, if you do it multiple times, then you might get the correct height that it's on. Okay. Or you could just compress the same um, or do this. All right. Explain how you would measure, um, how you would use this data to see if it's correct or not. Well, the way I would do it is that you can now graph the, you can graph the line comparing the spring potential energy versus the gravitational potential energy. So you could graph this comparing to this. Then you're going to see, then you're going to see that as you compress the string, so X, the displacement, as you compress this, you are going to have different values of height. 
okay so this should have a linear relationship because this is going to be one half kx squared and this is going to be mgh and you're going to have a linear relationship okay because as you compress it more of it should come out all right the line of best fit should show the conversion of the kinetic the potential energy of the spring get becoming the potential of the ramp now a side note if you can use the purple if you can use the orange example what you can actually do is you can use a you could actually calculate where it is in the middle as well okay so the orange step is just optional if you would like to just show the um, middle step as well because here you could also graph the this one half k x squared and here you could graph um the orange part which was one half m v squared okay and you should see the same thing because at the middle the gravi the gravitational spring should still be converted into the um, kinetic energy as well all right but that's just optional Lastly, they said that if the spring constant um, turns out to be larger than the initial measurement, how would this affect the results? Well, if the, if the spring constant K was larger than the calculation for the spring, the spring potential would be larger. Therefore, the gravitational energy of the car obtained at the end would be greater. Let's see. Let's look at the calculation. So if this is the K, if this was larger okay this is larger then this whole thing is going to be larger as a result this is going to be larger so you're going to see more mgh but your experiment so this is the correct calculation right so it should look something like this okay but your graph looks something like this Okay, you will see that this is higher. The difference here is higher. And this difference is caused by a larger spring constant. Okay, if you didn't know that you had a larger spring constant, the increase in the gravitational energy that shows the ch chart reaches a higher point on the ramp than expected would seem like there would be extra energy given to the block spring earth system. Likewise, if you would decrease the spring constant, like if I give you a object that had a low spring constant, you're going to see it reaches a, lo a lower point. And this, I'm going to make this in pink. This is caused by the small, this is a um, lower spring constant. All right, so there you go um that's it that's all that's for the lab again i didn't write the procedure because you should be able to read the procedure okay so here's the procedure understand orange is optional here's the theory setup again here are the notes for the idea and that's conservation of energy okay and there you go that is your solutions for 40.